Welcome back to Trackside. I'm Carol Holden along with Sam Hoff, and our guest is Steve Nevin of Altitude Simulation Technologies. And, Steve, before the break, you were talking about some of the human athletes who use your system in their bedrooms and that, but uh, we were talking about stalls for horses. So I would imagine there's a little bit of a difference between setting up someone's bedroom at home with this technology and, and doing a stall for a horse in a barn. Can you explain the differences in those and what's involved with a stall? Well, there's actually, uh, surprisingly, there's really not that much difference. I mean, this, you know, the stall is basically the the altitude room versus a human athlete that may have their bedroom converted to be altitude capable. But the, we use the same technology. We have a, a proprietary control system that inside the altitude environment constantly measures uh, barometric pressure, oxygen flow, and temperature. And that control system for a stall system has a display panel on the outside of the stall so that the owner trainer can set the altitude without having to disturb the stall. And it's really a neat system. You just set the target altitude and you forget it. It's kind of like, you know, a heater air conditioning thermostat. It shows uh, two LED displays, one where the target altitude is set and the other where the actual altitude is in the stall. And if the stall is properly sealed, uh, that stall will climb up to 10,000 feet within two hours uh, from zero. Um, and what produces the simulated altitude air are, are hypoxic air units. And for a standard box stall, you, uh, four of those air units is required. And they need to be in a temperate environment within 90 feet of the stall. So some owners actually have the air units on top. Or they put us, you know, on top of the ceiling of the stall and they close that up to make it temperate. Or alternatively, they've got a attack room or an equipment room within 90 feet. And, and that's it. So, I mean, the components are the air units, it's the control system, and the stall itself. You know, it's interesting. I'm sitting here listening to you, and I'm thinking about football players, you know, particularly quarterbacks and coaches and all this on, on the offense. They're all looking for a little edge of how they can attack the defense, how they can do this, how they can do that. <laughs> it's it's interesting. You bring it down to horse racing, you bring it down to this. And trainers are very much like head coaches. In in uh, they, They're looking for a little edge to make the jockey, to make the athlete feel like, hey, I, here's something that you can defeat the other team with. Is that what you're doing? Yes, absolutely, and of course we're we're busy trying to constantly, you know, uh, make our product and our training systems visible to head athletic trainers and strength coaches. On the horse side, on the equine side, there's even more of an important element there, and that is what's best for the animal. And I think this is going back to this area of steroids and breakdowns and what have you. The fact of the matter is, is that altitude exposure creates an all-natural response in the animal that's very, very healthy. It's a conditioned response that uh, allows the animal to be stronger and fitter and in general should require less, you know, rigorous training for for the given level of performance that you're going to achieve. And that's why we're very focused on this lactic acid buildup area um, because, I mean, any time you can reduce lactic acid associated with uh, uh, performance in an equine, and this is also, this is true for humans as well as dogs. And by the way, we have dogs resting at altitude as well. Um, the fact of the matter is you're going to have a healthier animal, a fitter animal, and one that's just better conditioned and can perform better with lesser pain. So we think, you know, not only is this modality important for performance and conditioning, we think it's a good thing for the animal as well. I'm going to have to ask you, in order to reach this ideal altitude, what's it going to cost? <laughs> <laughs> it all comes down to money. <laughs> well, for a stall system, the basic price is in the range of $36,000. Okay, and that doesn't include the prepping of the stall and the equipment room. We we used to uh, we used to actually be involved in that, and uh, we used to provide some exotic materials to do the stall prep, and it was very expensive. And you know, about a year or two ago, we were talking with other engineers, and they said, you know what? Why do we need that? Why don't we use basic materials to prepare the stall? Like when you put a ceiling in, let's make it plywood. You know, let's not have all of this expensive materials because the horse will kick through some of this stuff anyways. So we actually, I mean, a stall can be prepped usually for under $2,000, 
with basic materials, you know, changing the door and covering the windows and, and so forth like that. So when you get through with all the preparation, you might be in the range of $40,000. But, you know, I will tell you that we are in the process of breaking through with this product and, um, you know, uh, we do uh, provide discounts for orders for more than one stall, and we frequently get involved in larger installations, and, and we make it uh, we make as sweet as deal as possible. Well, this is the type of thing that you might say that's a lot of money for the average horse owner, but when you're looking at what people spend on horses nowadays, and when you're running for multi-million dollar purses, that can be a, a minor investment. Well, that's the way we think of it as well. I mean, not only is it a good deal for the horse, but, you know, it, you know, I, I would agree with you. Relative to what's being spent in equine market today, it's not outrageous. The other thing is is that we do have financing programs that can bring a stall system, you know, down to about $850 a month. So, I mean, we, we, we find ways to make it affordable as possible for the owner trainer. So between financing and the overall system itself, we think if somebody really is looking for that edge and that performance and that and that training modality, we can find a way to make it happen. Well, I got an idea for you. Why don't you make a modular system and then you can truck it in and put it in a barn? You know, Sam, you're not the first one that's thought about that, and we are <laughs> thinking about it, and oh, it's, a, it's go. a good idea. Uh, okay. So that may be on the drawing boards. Okay. In certain circumstances, I can see where that would, would be good if you could set it up actually next to your, your barn or if you had an open area within it. Yeah, uh, one of the challenges with uh, with altitude training is the movement of horses, and so that's one of the answers we've come up with is having that kind of mobile unit. So it's something we are giving consideration to. We've been talking about mostly for racing and that, whether it be flat or steeplechase, but I think you, in somewhere in the conversation you mentioned jumping. So do you have show horses also working in this system? Yeah, we've got, as I mentioned, uh, uh, Willie Mullins has got jumpers uh, as well as flat racers using the system. We have endurance horses overseas using the system, and some of those are, are jumpers. I'm not aware at this point that we have, I mean, I don't believe we have owners using the system for dressage and things of that nature. But we do think that there is a, a very broad market for the application of altitude training equine for horses other than just thoroughbreds or even jumpers. I mean, we've got, you know, we think, we think there's a market there for cutting horses. We know quarter horse racers are also interested in that. Well, hopefully the thoroughbred industry will pick up on it. Steve, we want to thank you very much for being on Trackside. And best of luck with, I'm going to say it again, the altitude simulation technology system. Hey, thanks very much, Carol. <laughs> thank you.